Continuing on with our problems that uh, we're, we're kind of transisting from free convection chapter nine to a, several problems. I'll work three today and probably one or two on Monday. But they're gonna be combined mode heat uh, transfer problems. Combined mode means they might involve conduction, convection, and or radiation. So it, it's a good review for our finals week. Uh, and we're going to start out, this is still partially a chapter 9 problem, free convection. It's a, a horizontal pipe in a large room. The surroundings, we're going to go back and review radiation. The surroundings, 300K, that's the room wall temperatures typically. The air temperature in the room, 300 K. And the surface temperature of the horizontal pipe, 400 K. Diameter of the pipe, 150 millimeters. The emissivity of the pipe, 0.85. We're asked to find the uh, heat loss from the hot pipe uh, per meter of pipe length. So Q prime, we want to find Q prime, watts per meter. Okay, so. Let's start off, and as said, you, obviously here, the properties we're gonna need are at T-film, uh, like for, what's the fluid here? I'll put it down, it's air. 350, 300 plus 400 divided by two, so properties at T-film, 350. All right, so we start out, and our Q prime is composed of two parts, uh, Q convection, plus Q prime radiation. The uh, convection is H bar uh, pi D circumference T surface minus T infinity. And our second one is um, radiation. Go back to chapter one, small object in large surroundings, epsilon, sigma, area per length, pi d, t surface to the fourth, minus t surroundings to the fourth. Okay, so there's the two heat transfer modes. Radiation and convection. Convection is chapter nine, horizontal pipe. We haven't done that one yet. The last time we met, we did, we looked at four different geometries. Here's what they were. We looked at vertical planes. Okay, like that. Find H from a vertical surface. <clears throat> we did H from a vertical cylinder if a certain inequality was met. We did H from a horizontal plate. Two choices here. <clears throat> Is the plate heated or cooled? Okay, make a decision. Uh, are you looking at the top surface or the bottom surface of the heated or the cooled plate? Okay, answer those questions and you're led to a particular equation to find H. Okay, got it, that's four things. This is the fifth one now. This is a horizontal cylinder pipes, tubes, whatever. Obviously, the whole point here is, this is chapter one, simple stuff. Whole point here is we gotta find H bar. Okay, chapter nine, find H bar. Step one, get Rayleigh if you can. Okay, to find H bar, get Rayleigh. Okay, um, so our Rayleigh number, D, G, beta, T, 
T surface minus T infinity D cubed nu alpha. Ten to the seventh. We know everything in here. G nine point eight one, air ideal gas beta one over absolute temperature one divided by three fifty. We know T s. We know T infinity. Diameter is given. Go to the back of the book with the temperature three fifty for air. Get nu. Get alpha. Put them in here. There's what you get. Okay. So now. Uh, get H bar, so no salt bar D equal H bar D over K. And that's C really D to the N. Go to the uh, table here to get those values, table 9-1. And you get the values of the two. Uh, C is 0 0.125. N is one third. And that leaves you with an H of 6.15. Okay, so then let's go ahead and uh, get Q. So Q prime, uh, if you put these guys in here, H bar 6.15 pi times D times delta T, uh, you get 290. Convection. We know epsilon 0.85, sigma 5.67, 10 to the minus 8. We know D, we know TS. Put absolute, absolute temperatures here. TS to the fourth, T shrines to the fourth. Do that. If you do that, you end up with 397. So the radiation loss is more than the convection loss. The total is 687. Okay, so that is the fifth geometry we even looked at in Chapter 9, Free Convection. How do you tackle a horizontal pipe or a tube? That's what you do right here. Rayleigh, Nussalt, H, put H in Q. Up here, you got it. Okay, any question on that one then? I'm sorry? Which one? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Got it, good, yeah. Okay, now um, we're gonna look at a problem from the textbook. I've got problem 1219. I'm just not sure if that's the sixth or eighth edition. So it might be the uh, sixth edition, but I'm gonna describe it here and pass out something for you here anyway. So uh, problem 1219. So let me, I photocopy it, I'll pass it out to you so you can kind of follow as you're looking at the board. Okay, so, and I'll put it on the board here. What we have, I'll, I'll draw the picture first.
Okay, I'll add to that in just a second. Uh, problem statement. The dark surface of a ceramic stovetop, so it's a stovetop, it's that dark black stovetop, may be approximated as a black body. Okay. The burners, which are integral with the stovetop, are heated from below by electric resistance heaters. Here, this is the stovetop. Keep reading. Consider a burner of diameter 200 millimeters operating at a uniform surface temperature of 250 in ambient air at 20 degrees C. Without a pot or pan on the burner, what are the rates of heat loss by radiation and convection from the burner? Okay, so he tells us that um, the burner temperature is 250 degrees C. Uh, he tells us that the air is 20 degrees C. Diameter is 200 millimeters. Okay. I think that's all we're given. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Oh, let's see, I think, okay, he said the burner's a black body. Epsilon, oh, the stove top is black body. Okay, got it. So obviously, we're supposed to include radiation. So there's no pot or pan on top. You just turn it on. Sometimes you'll see it glow dull red. It's a circular thing on your stove top. Okay. Obviously, air, convection, obviously, emissivity one, radiation. Okay, so now we know it's a combination or it's a combined mode heat transfer problem. What kind of convection? Free convection and radiation. This problem, what's over here? Free convection, radiation. What is this? Horizontal cylinder. What's this? Circular disk. Okay. Let's do the radiation first. Um, Q radiation. A, S, E, B. Let's go back and review chapter 12. E is the emissive power of the surface. B stands for black body emissive power. Okay. Sigma t to the fourth. So, surface area of the circular burner, pi d squared divided by four. Emissive power, sigma t surface to the fourth. Got it. Epsilon is one. That's why it's eb. We can put those numbers in there, and if you do that, it says you end up with 133 watts. Okay. And, of course, let's put that here. Q equal Q radiation plus Q convection. Okay. Next, find Q convection. Free convection. Okay, it's free convection from the surface. <clears throat> Here's what we've got. Is it a vertical surface? No. Is it a vertical cylinder? No. Is it a horizontal cylinder? No. Is it a horizontal plate? Yes. Okay, now you've got the decision. Is it a hot plate or a cold plate? Oh, what's a hot plate? It's glowing dull red. Hot plate. Is it the top or the bottom? It's the top. Okay, so now we know. Go to the equation. Hot plate, top, surface. You have three choices there, you know, in a horizontal surface. So pick the right one that way. All right. 
hot plate top surface. Okay, so um, chapter 9. First step always, get really if you can. Got it. Really, D equal G beta T S minus T infinity. D cubed divided by nu X. Oh, I take that back. We don't use diameter there. You might be tempted to, but you know, don't do it. The only one that has a D here in the Rayleigh number, the only one, is a horizontal cylinder. A vertical plate, what do you base the Rayleigh number on? L, what's L? The height. Vertical cylinder pipe. If the Grashoff inequality is satisfied, you can model that as a flat plate. What's L for that? The height, top to bottom. If it's a horizontal plate, if it's rectangular, what's L? If it's square, what's L? If it's circular, what's L? Okay, we know from last time where L, surface area over perimeter, pi d squared divided by four divided by pi d is d over four. So that is, that goes in our uh, really number. If you do that, you get 6.35 times 10 to the fifth. Really number. Right. Okay, so now we're ready to put the Rayleigh number in the H equation. So next, nu salt bar L, H bar L over K. And now, as you can uh, see, we've got the equation of uh, 930, so that's 0.54. Really, L to the one quarter. Okay, uh, I, that's the equation nine thirty. And solve to get. H bar. 10.5. So next Q, it's up here. Oh, our Q, okay, we're good. H bar, A, S, times uh, T, S minus T infinity. Of course, the surface area pi d squared divided by four. I just found h bar. So this guy is 75.7. So, oh here, okay. So radiation 133 plus convection, 75.7, 
233 is radiation, so radiation is the bigger heat loss than the convection. Okay, any question on that guy? How come over here, the radiation term is a difference in the surface and the surroundings. But over here, I don't see a difference. I don't see TS to the fourth minus T surroundings to the fourth. Why is this guy like that and that guy's like that? Okay, well, first of all, you have to read the words real carefully. Here's what he says. I want you to find the heat loss from the burner. Okay. Heat loss, I'll give you just a second. He didn't say the net heat loss, he said the heat loss. What does the heat loss mean? What goes out? That's what goes out. What's this problem over here? This problem is the net radiation. What goes out minus what comes in? This is the net. So it's the words that tell you the difference. All I want to know here is how much goes out by convection, how much goes out by radiation. It's this guy all by himself. It's not minus, it's not the net, it's how much goes out. Yes, sir, question? Oh, yeah, Where? which one now? Uh, where are you looking, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> How'd the X get in there? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, my, my Greek all of a sudden got messed up. Okay, so that's, um, that's two problems that involve radiation, and they both involve free convection. One's a horizontal surface, and one is a horizontal uh, cylinder. Okay, now let's look at another one. All right, this one, let's see what kind of space I need here. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. Of course, when you do a problem like this, you have to assume that the, the heater is surrounded by insulation, so there's no conduction heat transfer out the bottom or the sides because you don't know how thick it is, what it's made out of, so you have to assume that is perfectly insulated on the sides and the bottom there. Okay, let's see, we don't need this, we don't need this, okay. All right, we'll leave him on for a minute. Uh, this problem, okay. I've got a Marcus problem 754, I think that's the eighth edition. Problem 754. Okay, so here's what it is. It's a pin fin on a chip, electronic chip. Chapter seven is in, so here's the picture. Chip, fin, he tells us the diameter is two millimeters. The height of the pin fin is 12 millimeters. Pin fin is copper. There's air blowing against the pin fin. 
temperature of the air 300 K. The velocity of the air approaching the pin fin 10 meters per second. Pin fin is four millimeters by four millimeters square. The base temperature of the chip T base three fifty K air is at three hundred cooling it. Okay, I think that's all that's given on that problem. Yeah. Um, okay, so, oh, he says um, find the heat loss from the fin and chip. Find Q from fin and chip. Okay, got it. Let's see, temperature 350, temperature 300. So let's see, uh, properties at uh, copper. And that's going to be, um, we'll use 350K. Air properties. The uh, air is at 300. Again, there's no doubt here, this first problem I worked, there's no doubt I'm gonna take the properties of air at 300 plus 400 divided by two, because I know that whole surface is 400. Here, you know the story. At the base, what's the temperature? 350. At the top end here, I don't know. Maybe it's close to 300, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's 325, I don't know. I can guess it and take an average, or I can just say, you know what, I'm just going to assume properties of air at 300. And, and uh, I'm sorry, the air, air properties. Uh, copper, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So here's what I would do. When I'm all done, I would find the temperature up here. And then I'd find copper properties at 350 plus the temperature here divided by 2. So I'd iterate with the temperatures. But we're not going to do that. But... That's what you would do in the real world. But the, the, what I'm going to mention here is, of course, there's two temperatures you have to worry about, the copper temperature and the air temperature. OK, so let's get, we'll break this down then. Let's, let's do the fin first. Number one, convection from the fin. I chose this because it's a good review of chapter uh, seven and three. Fins are seven, I mean, fins are three, flat surfaces are seven. That chip is like a flat surface with the air blowing over it. But we'll do the fin first. It's, it's a good review uh, of chapter three for fins. Okay, um, for the uh, fin, Let's start with this. What kind of fin is it? Okay, it's a pin fin. Okay, next question. 
Is it a fin of uniform cross-section? Yes, it is. If I slice it here, the area is pi d squared divided by 4. If I slice it here, the area is pi d squared divided by 4. If I slice it up here, the area is pi d squared divided by 4. Yeah, it's a fin of uniform cross-section. Okay, number two. In chapter three, how do I find QF? Well, there's, a, there's table three, four. The title is, use this for fins of uniform cross-section. Great, got it. Use table three, four. Okay, next question. In table three, four, there's four choices. Choice A, convection at the tip. Here's the tip. B, I think it was, yeah, adiabatic fin tip. Uh, C was prescribed temperature at the fin tip. D was the fin can be modeled as if it were an infinite fin. Okay. Um, as we said in chapter three, always check case D, infinite fin, because that's the easy way out. No hyperbolic signs, no hyperbolic cosines. It's straightforward, E to the minus MX. Easy, easy, easy. Try and get the easy way out. Okay, so first thing, check for infinite fin. Case D. Okay. Step number one. Uh, get little uh, M. We'll get both capital M and little m. If we're in chapter three, he was really nice to us. No one in the real world is that nice, but he was really nice to us. He said, guess what? I'm gonna give you H bar, because you're just in chapter three. You don't know what chapter seven, eight, and nine are yet. Okay, I understand that. But the real world, you can't, you can't use this table until you get H bar. So now, this, no, how do you find H bar? Okay, let's put that over here. I'm, I'm, yeah, we'll put it over here to find H bar. Okay. You know what I did? I did average that. 300, uh, I didn't average, pardon me. I took that at 350, I'm not, oh, I'm sorry, 325. I did average it. 350 plus 300 divided by two, 325. Yeah, so I took the average, which makes more sense. Uh, so air properties, we got it. Reynolds number based on the pin fin diameter, VD over nu, velocity given at 10, the diameter 0 0.002. Kinematic viscosity 18.4. 10 to the minus 6. 10.88. Got it. Use Hilpert equation. to get H. 
equation 752. Table uh, 7-2, C, 0.683, M, 0.466, no salt D, we can put a bar over it, that's fine. No salt D, H bar D over K equals C, Reynolds to the M, Prandtl to the one-third. No salt, 15.83. We know all that stuff. I just found C and M. I know K and so on. Okay, we got these guys, got that. So we need H bar though. Um, this gives H bar. 221, 221 watts per meter squared K. So that's the new material. In chapter three, they gave you H. In chapter seven, they said find H first, then go back to chapter three and find Q from the fin. Okay, now I, I, I can do a little M now. Perimeter pi times D, cross-sectional area, don't forget, there's like three or four areas with fins. There's area of the fin, there's the cross-sectional area, there's a profile area, A sub P. You can easily get those areas confused, so try and clarify those in your mind. All right, anyway, uh, is this, be careful. Sometimes people will do strange things on exams. See that K? You're gonna have two Ks. Here and here. And I guarantee you, under stress and pressure, sometimes people will choose the wrong K and put the K for copper in for air or vice versa. Be careful, red flag. Think what you're doing. What is this? The fin. Down here, the chip. Convection heat transfer. Boundary layer on the bottom. What is that? Air K. Okay, but we're in the fin, so copper K. All right, so he turns out to be 33.06. And he turns out to be 2.07. We know the perimeter equal pi D. We know the cross-sectional area, C stands for cross-sectional area, not convection. It stands for cross-section, pi D squared divided by four. We know theta B means T base minus T infinity. Okay, got it. Check for infinite fin is ML greater than or equal to 2.65. Here's little m. There's our L. What, what is the uh, L, the length of the fin from the base, got it, 0 0.40. No, it's not. Okay, cannot use infinite fin approximation. Okay, so, I think I'll move over here. I want to keep all this on the board. So use case, 
Okay. Did the problem say the fin tip is adiabatic? No. Did the problem say the fin tip temperature is given? No. So it's no case D, no case C, no case B. So guess what it is? Case A. Convection from the tip. Of course, of course. Why, why wouldn't you want that? That's what a, the fin's supposed to take heat out. You want the area to be the biggest possible to pull that heat out of that chip. Okay, so now here's what we got from that. So we've got QF, capital M, cinch ML, plus H bar over K, MK, Kosh ML, divided by Okay, so we go to the, get, get the, the cinches and coshes. We get Q fin equals 0 0.815 watts. So each pin fin is putting out a little less than one watt. Uh, of course, you, you'd put hundreds of these pin fins on a, an area, maybe even thousands because you're trying to dump a lot of heat from these electronics, so not just less than one watt. So, but each, each pin fin would dump heat out of, out of the chip, 0.815 watts. Okay, is there any question on how the pin fins work again? Okay, review fins for the final, obviously. Okay, uh, now we're gonna, we're gonna tackle next the heat lost from the chip, but it's gonna take a while, so I'm gonna stop for today because I wanna complete it uh, on uh, Monday.